people who are not here to have to miss out on the the tales of um, early skateboarding from Paul. So um, it's not just me. <laughs> Brian's a skater star too. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so we'll talk about the the film. Um, I'm kind of curious just for kind of a an opening, maybe something to get started talking about it is um, just how the film generally represents skateboarding and how that meshes with how you your like perception of skateboarding um, does it does it match or how do you how is skateboarding presented as a as a culture as a sport as a art form in the film and does that kind of match up with how you see it You asking somebody in particular? I think Brian you, you has can, something. To say. <laughs> you, you can call on folks if you want. Oh, okay. But, All right. Uh, well, um, uh, Douglas and I were talking a little bit earlier. Douglas, do you want to? Um, well, yeah. So I don't really have too much uh, um, history with skateboarding. Uh, I was telling Forrest that you know when I grew up, it was steel wheels on uh, you know these uh, on these boards in the early '60s and you know, um, it was just like they said in there, you know, you hit a little pebble or something like that and everything stops or a little crack on the sidewalk. So I, I really lost interest uh, very quickly and never really picked it up again. All this stuff that was presented in the movie was going on basically when I was in high school, I was completely oblivious to it. I didn't know anybody that did skateboarding, but when those wheels came out, then, you know, the, the place I saw it was in at the skating rinks. Um, then I'll, you know, then, then you had, you know, you could do a lot more, uh, um, at the skating rinks. So, mm -hmm. um, uh, but yeah, I don't, I didn't have much involvement, but so it was very interesting to me to kind of see that, you know, realize all this stuff was going on around me. I didn't know mm -hmm. I was in California, but I was in Northern California. So not close to where they were, but, um, but it, in the later seventies, and they said that, um, that uh, I assume everybody's watched the movie at the very end, they had that last uh, summer where they uh, went over to the kid's house and yeah. swam in the pool and so forth. He said that was the summer of 77. Yeah. So I was, I was down, I was at Long Beach State at that time. So I don't know, I still didn't <laughs> see any of that kind of stuff going on. That's interesting. Yeah. Well, it was very underground. It was behind those walls and fences. And, you know, unless you knew what was going on, you didn't. Yeah. You know, I guess so. I mean, you see people skate, skate, uh, skateboarding down the streets and stuff. And then, you know, then all the malls would have to start posting signs, no skateboarding here. Right. Yeah. Right? Uh, that kind of thing. But that was still my exposure. Mm -hmm. Although the sur on the surfing side, um, at that time when I was at Long Beach State, I had a roommate who was from Southern California, from, you know, from the area there um, and was a surfer. And kind of like, oh, wow, there's a whole subculture here of surfers, you know, because so, he'd go out there, you know, most mornings and before classes and uh, go surfing. And, you know, I met some of his friends and stuff. So that was uh, my exposure. Yeah. Daniel, how about you? What, how did it match with how you see skateboarding or, or are you still still muted? How's that sound? Perfect. Okay. All right. So I guess I should say I've been skateboarding since 99. So uh -huh. almost 21 years. Uh, I'm 32. So um, it, this, this movie premiered in 2001. Right. Uh, I just, I just looked that up. And so things are so much different now. Mm -hmm. um, back then I felt, um, Oh, this is really cool. You know? Um, and I mean, I mean, it is, of course, but but I was thinking about the how in the email there's there's a prompt of like inclusivity yeah. and stuff, and I thought, um, and then when we got to the section of the, I can't remember the name of the the uh, the peer wave part where oh um, right Pierce. yeah yeah where they're talking about locals only and stuff yeah. like that, um, I, yeah, I definitely have felt more of a vibe. Um, 
I grew up in Orange County, California, okay. and I, I felt more of a vibe back then. But yeah. like last week, there is a video on Thrasher, you know, which is huge. Yeah. And uh, about like a queer skateboarding company yeah. um, called Glue. And there's a there's a couple of transgender people on there. Yeah. And just how much has changed since then. Yeah. Um, I've come out since then. And um, I, would, I will oh, definitely cool. say like, like 2001 is so archaic to me now you <laughs> right. know yeah. like for sure um i mean i'm i'm proudly out at the skate park whenever i go um and it's it's pretty interesting like i i would say um the locals only vibe was still present in 2001 mm -hmm. um, when i started skateboarding i remember getting some vibes when i was at a skate park I was like pushing Mongo. I didn't yeah. know what I was doing. I was getting in people's way without realizing it, yeah. you know? And um, ever since then, um, when I moved to Eugene 2013, I have felt a lot more welcome um, as a person that might have to do with we're in Eugene, you know, as opposed <laughs> right. to Orange County. Um, but I do feel that um, when I did go to go back to visit my family, I go to the skate park and I would say people are a lot nicer generally. So I feel like the inclusivity has really only increased in the past decade or so yeah. um, from my experiences. Um, but at the same time, um, I do understand the need to protect um, some places like yeah. whatever that surf, that uh, peer uh, surfing break was called because like some people are going to get hurt. Mm -hmm. you know and sometimes you do need like sort of mentors to help guide you to make sure like don't snake someone don't drop in when someone else is writing yeah you know and so there's a it's a very gray area of like what sh what needs to be inclusive and what can be kind of protected because you don't want people to sort of like ruin things for everyone else without knowing yeah. you kind of need to teach people but i think it's it's a responsibility for the more experienced people to teach them in a more loving way. Yeah. In, in my opinion, um, I'm not a huge fan of like the, the school of hard knocks where you like, it's tough love. Like I'm not a mm -hmm. huge fan of that. Sometimes it does work, but yeah. um, I think it's really dependent on who the people are in, as individuals. So, yeah, it's, I think that's such a good point. And I, I'm really glad that you brought a lot of that up. Cause that's something that I, and Paul and I talked about this a little bit before when we we're getting ready for this is I think something that's really interesting about skateboarding to me is it, it's really a, a a lot of it is about inclusivity and diversity and stuff like you know that early Dogtown Zephyr team was pretty diverse you know like mm -hmm. um culturally um gender wise even you know right like Yoki's Yoki. on there um uh, which, I mean, <laughs> it's kind of Peggy Oki was like the only girl on that mm -hmm. company. And it felt, it feels like to me, like it's been until like recently that there have been teams with more than one girl on them. Mm -hmm. um, exactly. So it's kind of disappointing that it didn't progress any quicker, but, um, but it's also skateboarding's also been, so there's a, a inclusivity and a diversity to it but it's also a place where like uh like daniel said i pushed mongo i started skating in uh like 2000 maybe 2002 or so mm -hmm. um and i pushed mongo until like <laughs> last year not <laughs> two years ago um, I, I had to like read you know 17 years of pushing mongo was hard to uh that was a hard habit to break, but I, and I, I grew up in a small mountain town, so I didn't know any better. Mm -hmm. I didn't have anybody to guide me really. And then when I got around people, like when I moved to Portland, people were like, what are you doing? But I, it just didn't make sense to me. Like, I'm just pushing, like if I can get back right. on my board and Ollie, like, why does it matter? Exactly. Um, uh, and then like the shame of like that being in my head all the time, eventually forced me like i'm just gonna learn how to push regular and then i won't have to think about this anymore and i think that's kind of interesting that like something that made me unique as a skater mm -hmm. i felt like i had to quash it 
Great. Um, mm-hmm. I do think I grew a lot by like having to retrain my brain for how to push. And mm-hmm. so it's not like it was a terrible experience, but it is, there's a lot of that kind of thing that happens with skateboarding too. Like are your kickflips rocket or like, right. yeah. um, uh, all kinds of things like that, that are like ways to signify, do you carry your board? Do you mall grab? Like, right. yeah. which is just the <laughs> wrong way to carry your board is by carrying it with the truck. And that's stupid, but it is a way that like, we kind of exclude people from being part of the in crowd. And right. I think that's, it's just really interesting to me that like, and then, and then it's also another place. It's a place where I experienced hearing a lot of homophobia growing up, mm-hmm. hearing a lot of um, chauvinist kind of. And I still like when I skate at Corvallis, for instance. Mm-hmm. It's it's pretty chill. Everybody's pretty nice. Um, and uh, but then, you know, I I've skated in. You know, I live in Monmouth, and I once in a while I'll go skate in Dallas or places like that. And you 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 hear homophobia kind of stuff going on still and and i don't think anybody i don't know i don't know what they mean by it but like all of a sudden you're like oh geez this is this is still the way people talk some places and um so that's and i think in the movie it's interesting how they kind of they talk about like um how the the people that were at the it's at del mar right the contest where jay adams is sliding around and i think so going off the stage and stuff and um and and how like their style of skating was this tough guy thing and and everybody else they were doing something else and i don't know it's just it's interesting how it's at the same time really inclusive and um and exclusive and how important both doing both of those seem to be to the culture right yeah brian you have some interesting comments in the chat do you want to expand on that oh no i I, you know growing up in the 70s i think that uh everybody wanted to be like the dogtown skaters because Mm -hmm. they epitomized Mm -hmm. cool during that particular time yeah and i i think that uh Yeah, if everybody is cool, then suddenly it's not cool. Right. You, you know what I mean? Um, but I, I think the weird thing, however, is that, um, and that probably pertains to almost everybody here in this room. Um, I kept skating way past my friends. You, you know, I kept skating at the point where it was not cool to skate. And uh, I think that uh, in part, skateboarding is uh, for outcasts. Mm. Yeah. You know, you, you, you got to have that little bit of mentality um, in order to do it and really not care what people happen to think of you. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's easy to sort of be... Um, like I remember I would skate on campus and like even, and this was, I don't know, 10 years ago and I would skate on campus and skating was like relatively popular, but I still felt like different in a sense, like Mm -hmm. rather than everyone walking and I would get told to stop skating, you know, by the, by the campus security guards. So, I mean, even though it's very, very mainstream, it's in the Olympics next year. Um, there's always still going to be that element of um, danger because, you know, you're on a skateboard. I saw a 60-year-old guy, like, break his collarbone a couple of years ago at the skate park, you mm-hmm. know? Like, there's always something present that's going to keep it from being completely, um, you know, uh, safe, mm-hmm. you know? And I think that's kind of important, you know? I, yeah. I, I play a lot safer now that I'm 32 um, than when I was, you know, 12, but... Yeah. You know, like, I think that's, that's a, it's important to um, have the sort of ability to know your limits and take risks, you know, uh, know, and yeah, push yourself, you know, and I think that's not always in a, in a way that's more dangerous than let's say basketball, yeah. right? Um, so I think there's always something to it that's going to be a little bit rebellious or whatever, you know? Mm-hmm. 
I, I am though totally envious of uh, of this generation of skaters because um, the one thing I noticed that really spans all the generation of skaters um, is you look at the terrain in a different way. Mm -hmm. You know, you look at the courtyard, you look at a particular bank, you look mm -hmm. at uh, um, this feature and you think, hey, I can do this. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it would never occur to me to skate a ledge for example, or, or to create, or, or to skate a, a set of stairs. I mean, it doesn't even pop into my head. <laughs> um, some of the things that uh, the younger skaters are doing, they look at the terrain and go, yeah, I can do that. Yep. Or uh, in, in the case of those of us who aren't that good, you think somebody could do that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> right. I look, at, I look at all the retaining walls and think we just need to wax those things on yep. up. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, I look at the fountain you know the angled walls of that fountain okay it hit hit that corner how how far out into the fountain can you pop an ollie and, and land on the other side I, i've thought of all that too <laughs> yeah i'm pretty sure i've sized up all the stair sets at lb mm -hmm. <laughs> not not that i would ever jump down any of them i don't think but <laughs> I, I i've looked down them and thought i wonder what that would feel like earlier we're talking about you know, when i i kind of i I phased out of skateboarding when I was uh, 19 because because I joined the Marine Corps and I, I in my mind I thought well wh wherever I get stationed I'm going to continue to skate well I tried that and I was immediately shunned and you know this you know Marines are serious and they're all about kicking ass not about this boyhood childish stuff you know so I had to go find some abandoned warehouses and buildings like way far away from my unit so nobody who knew me would see me riding this little little kitty toy you know and i had a great time anyway yeah. and then i discovered this really cool like it was like an abandoned skate park off in the woods off behind a, a city park about 30 or 40 miles away i guess it was and i took a push broom out there and cleaned up the whole skate park and had that almost every time I went there had it all to myself because it was just this forgotten relic from the, from like the mid seventies. Wow. And I, it took me, I was in the core four years. It took me the first couple of years to really get over the fact that, you know, I can be successful and be who I want to be and, and skateboard. I don't have to <laughs> put that stuff away. And so um, I got out of the core and, and that's when I moved down to Southern California and lived there full time for about three years and by then, though, I was 23, 24, 25, and I was getting to be too old to, you know, too old to, to do the rad stuff, but I still did the rad stuff. But, um, yeah, it's funny what you guys are saying about, uh, you know, not, not doing it, feeling shamed or something, feeling like a, you know, feeling like an outcast when you, you know, I, I just want to, I don't care who you are, I want to skate with you yeah. and uh, call it that, yeah. Yeah, I think that's something that really is special about skateboarding is I think there are a lot of people that really do have that attitude. And I think that's something that'll be interesting with, with it becoming a Olympic sport is it's not, it's a sport where in the sense that it is a sport, it's one where everybody wants to see somebody else, everybody else like land their stuff. I don't think it, I, I don't think Nigel Houston's going to go and like, root against the other people it want you know people to miss their tricks everybody wants to see it to to just land their own stuff and to push the the sport and i think that'll be pretty rad to see and and hopefully um be some a, a nuance that um can maybe tr start to cross over to other sports would be rad you know well it's it's because you you see you see a skater accomplish a trick or or the trick itself is challenging or the terrain they're on is challenging or both and maybe you have or maybe you haven't even conceived of what they're attempting mm -hmm. but when they when they attempt it and they biff it time after time after time well maybe it's not possible but then then one time they yeah. did make that so then that that kind of puts into my mind maybe I could do it too, you know, yeah. whether I ever do or not, at least I know that it's possible because I just witnessed it happening. Um, yeah. I loved all the segments in the, in the documentary 
that kind of went into that because to me that was one of the things in skateboarding was that um if you can conceive it you know it, the your first conception of a trick sometimes is like there's no way that is not possible but yeah. if you believe in it hard enough and you want it bad enough and you're willing to sacrifice and risk injury uh there's a good there's a a good enough chance that you can make it you can make the impossible possible hmm. and you know that that, that what, what like it's it's like the the trick the impossible it would have hmm. never occurred to me to try to ollie up onto something and turn your skateboard upside down and then somehow flip it back onto the wheels on on the way what that's impossible <laughs> yeah. whoever who who the heck first imagined doing that that's crazy but that that's that's the beauty of skateboarding you you can make the impossible happen for yourself you got to want it bad enough though mm -hmm. to me that's always been the biggest life lesson right there yeah uh, i think forest yeah oh forest and daniel uh, uh, i'm just wondering can i get your initial take on the movie itself just because uh you know, and yeah. this all started before you all were born and people are probably skating in a lot different style. You know, did, did you just think it was kind of quaint? You know, what were your kind of initial reactions? Go for it, Daniel. Oh, okay. Um, it's, it, it was definitely different now than I, when I first saw it. Um, when I, so I'm a skate nerd. I, I consume skate media like all the time. Like every day when i wake up watch skate videos to sort of get my um, brain going you know um and so to me it was cool to have it's cool to have like a history lesson in people's perspectives you know um and i always thought that's really important um i'm not a big history buff at all i have a terrible memory so it's just not my field but to know to understand like where things come from is is really neat um, there's a lot of that stuff I've read in magazines already and to put it into a film where you see all this footage um, and interviews with the original people I thought that was very eye-opening and awesome and I really um, felt that it was a yeah it just like made me also understand like this this might sound funny, but in 2001, um, it was like a lot of uh, people were skating a lot of stairs and rails and stuff. Um, not many people skated pools back then. And so it's sort of like opened up like, oh, yeah, you could do that. And you can do all this uh, slalom stuff, you know, mm -hmm. sliding on bangs. Like it opened up Burt slides to me, you yeah. know, like I had never considered doing that. And so it was really cool having the past perspective to sort of inform me um like how things can be um and then when i saw it a couple days ago it was it was kind of funny it's like well like these um these people um they were like super radical like back then but now they're like all grown up and they're like looking at the past you know and like even when I started skating in 2000, like that's the past too, you know? And so like, <laughs> it's making me feel like I watched this like nearly 20 years ago, yeah. you know? And like, <laughs> like, I don't feel old yet because I still skate at the skate park and do tricks and stuff. But, you know, like, like it's, it was weird having that um, stack upon stack of like feeling old again, <laughs> you know? Like I felt young first time I watched this, this time I felt like, man that's a long time ago and like watching it was a long time ago so it was mm -hmm. it was really bizarre in that sense yeah hey, brian and douglas <laughs> this guy daniel's talk about getting old <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's all relative <laughs> i know i know i know the, the the documentary was just just so well done i forgot when i watched it uh you know years ago when it first came out then i watched it again a couple of days ago well, it, it really nailed the, the history and they, it ju they just totally nailed the transition from from surf moves and culture mm -hmm. and attitude and the graffiti, the whole it just it just morphed in. So others that that is exactly how I remember it happening. Yeah. yeah. So you said that um, or at least in the email that went out that you skated with some of those guys. 
Yeah. Was just, that like when you went out there for the summer that yeah. you were talking about? Yeah, when I was, um, well, as, as a kid again in, in Oklahoma, okay, that's where I was living, you know. Um, at age 14, you could have a license to ride your motorcycle on the street uh, up to like 45 miles an hour, up to 125. So that didn't matter in California, except I was able to get away with driving my mother's car while she was at work for the day. She had this rad Datsun 260Z and I would take it out at 14 years old and I was all over Southern California hitting the skate parks. I would, I would have, I would have all these, these magazines from the year at home in Oklahoma with all these locations marked the, the different schools, the elementary schools where they were skating, you know, cause they were out of school for the summer, of course. And as many pools as I could find um, that were, that were referenced in these skateboard magazines. So I, I was always bumping into some of these guys. Um, Tony Alva himself and I, well, I was, I'd usually spend my time at Carlsbad Skate Park, um, which was like the first real skate park, at least that I know of in California. Um, and then they, they rebuilt it. I forgot what year. So I was, I was skating it quite a bit, both versions of that skate park. I think it's closed down now. Anyway, and it had to be 78 or nine. It wasn't 77, 78 probably. Um, it might have been, it doesn't matter. <laughs> I was there one day and for a, for a few years there, they had the, they, um, there, some brand of skateboard deck was, they had a, an eight wheel skateboard. It was like double, you might remember these, Brian, double, double wide, two, two sets of trucks and wheels side by side. It was just massive. It was like a novelty thing, but one of these days I'm, I'm there just, and I'm just, again, this punk nobody from Oklahoma here comes Tony freaking Alva and I'm all like oh ah, you know and he's on he's on one of these skateboards and he's he's ripping it he's getting air not huge air but getting air in the bowl and these gnarly lip slides and stuff and he also had you know a few conventional decks and he saw me sitting around just watching him and he says something like aren't you gonna skate I go well yeah but I don't want to get in your way he said well let's see what you can do I'm all like okay so I, I had a bunch of backside tricks down, okay, but I, I was I was too afraid to do anything front side. That, that, that's where you, you know you're, you can't see as well where you're going to land. I'm regular foot, you know. And so Tony Flippin' Alva taught me how to do front side kick turns. And through that course of that day, I'm not only doing pretty good front side kick turns on the small three to four foot banks, not the huge ones. He taught me how to do front side lip slides and front side grinds all in that one day. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. Are never going to believe this. So there's no, there's, there's no pictures, of course, you know, mm -hmm. and I had bumped into him a couple other times. So he didn't recognize me for anything, you know, um, but yeah, I, I bumped into a lot of these guys. None of them. I, there's no way any of them remember some dorky kid, you know, from Oklahoma. But the, one of the cool things I got to have is of course, going back home every every year i would um have all these cool tricks that they're just starting to see in the magazines in oklahoma here i come doing them <laughs> so it would yeah. take a long time for my friends to you know i was i was the best skater in my whole group around you know southeast tulsa oklahoma so that's something but uh it was a real kick in the pants i of course i always wished i lived in california the whole time but I, I also distinctly remember um, at the same time, even as a kid, being glad in a way that I didn't live there because I always felt like I was um, like too, too easily influenced and might have fallen into the drug thing. I mean, mm -hmm. honestly, that was, that was on my mind even back then. I didn't want to fall into that stuff. Mm -hmm. I wanted to remember what I was doing rather than just being all phased out at some point, you know, so kind of had yeah. the best of both worlds. I mean, it would yeah. have been cool to have been one of the Dogtown boys, though. Yeah. <laughs> and now Paul Tannehill is an e-learning systems guy at a community. Let's <laughs> <laughs> see, see Tannehill skates. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I couldn't. I couldn't imagine having more fun as a kid. Oh, yeah. boy, that's skateboarding. <clears throat> yeah. So first, we have somebody else join. Uh, yeah, Frank. We'll find out. Uh, are you available? Yeah. Yeah, I think he has something to say. 
He, I, he, he may also be attending the, the classified association meeting too. Oh yeah. Yeah. Totally get it. If, if you can't love to have people even just, uh, I mean, you want to listen in? know where Frank, I was from Oklahoma, but Frank was from Alabama. So that's, you know, mm. it's even further, further away from California. But uh, I don't think he was, I don't think he was a skater. He's a motorcyclist. I mean, we, we ride nice. motorcycles together a lot. Yeah. yeah. I think for me with the, um, and Frank, if, if you're available, just jump in whenever you can. Um, for me, the video, I've seen it. I've seen it a, before. I can't remember when I had seen it um, last, but um, since then I've um, kind of like Daniel was saying, I, I've kind of been pretty deep in the skateboarding history lately. So um, I think I was thinking a lot about um, how Stacy Peralta uh, directed the film and um, just kind of trying to sort out what kind of how he's trying to tell the story in what ways is he kind of myth making and and uh what is what's not being told in the story i think was kind of interesting like i don't think uh paul's story about um tony alva teaching him uh front side kick turns and and lip slides i don't think you get that side of tony alva from the yeah. from the film he didn't mention that in the video. No, he didn't know. <laughs> but you know, you don't get the impression. Not just that... you, not just you personally, but I mean, yeah. <laughs> idiot from Oklahoma one day. Yeah. Frank, I think that's the point of skateboarding is to be a danger to yourself and everyone around you. <laughs> I think I think that's the goal. So you're doing it right. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I, that's kind of interesting to me. Um, and. I don't think they do a bad job of it. And and it's interesting to me too, when I started skating, um, I I don't know whose example I was following. You know, I, the videos that were coming out that I was watching a lot were, you know, I watched a lot of Rodney Mullen and um, Mike Vallely. And so I ended up doing, I, I guess because of Mike Vallely, I was doing a lot of bonelesses and Burt slides. And um, I lived in this little mountain town and I remember there was a head shop that opened that was also going to sell skate stuff and they were gonna sponsor some kids. So they did this thing where like, everybody gets a minute to skate at the skate park. We had like a prefab kind of skate park and get a minute to see if you'll get like shop flow at all. Yeah, yeah. And um, so I took my run and this is in like 2004 and I was doing like early grabs over the, over a bump and like, uh, bird slides, pushing Mongo, and then a big boneless with a finger flip at the end. And I'm pretty sure I heard this guy be like, what, what year do you think this is? <laughs> like, <laughs> I did not get shot flow. <laughs> um, so that's something that's interesting to me is like, why did I gravitate? I, I skated a lot kind of like they were, I, it was just fun to slide around. Um, and uh, yeah, that skating I, is accessible to anyone because yeah. that was like the beginning. There's like less necessary technique to do the, very, like mm -hmm. you might not have the style as they said, but like you could just do them easier yeah, you than land kick on your flip. Board or yeah, right away. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Speaking of the style aspect, you know, they're they're talk, talking in those segments about uh, how important it was for them to have have the right style and everything. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember, of course, a lot of that, but not not to that extent. It was really revealing to me how how much uh, they pushed themselves and each other. You know, the Zephyr team primarily, because mm -hmm. uh, you know when you think about it, um, I mean, to this day, I follow a zillion uh, skaters on Instagram. For example, I'm like. This guy is, looks looks like a, a tree branch on the skateboard. This other guy makes it look so flowing and so easy and effortless. It's done. So I do kind of remember some level of, like in my imagination back then, they, 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 uh, this guy has a, a really good style. This guy not so much, um, but it didn't occur to me just to what extent, you know, they were, they were pushing themselves and pushing each other. Um, mm -hmm. And, uh, and the, way, the way they portrayed the, 
the progression as he started going into pools and and getting you know get, getting a little more slope and then you know I I, I totally get that when um, you're on a in, in a new area you and your buddies are pushing each other to go up. can you get over that light you think you can hit the tile yeah. okay now now that I wonder if we can get a wheel up on that coping mm-hmm. and then your first time ever doing a one wheeler you know actual swing swimming pool on coping. <sighs> or grinding that's such a (laughs) such a sensation yeah (laughs) i i think for me though the one thing that carries over across the generations and and i think um you know even if you're not a skateboarder douglas you'll appreciate this because you engage in activities that are like this um there is a real satisfaction in watching your friends progress Mm -hmm. You know, it's not necessarily a competitive sport by nature. Really, the only person you're competing against is yourself. Yeah. But ideally, you're kind of pushing everybody else, though, to be better at the same time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that is an absolute truth, man. Compete against yourself. Do as long as I can do at least a little bit better than I did yesterday, or a little better on that last run I did. You know, you're 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 fine tuning by you know your ear. You're fine tuning by, by small increments and making that trick, first of all, doable, possible. And then second of all, making it look better and sliding a little longer each time. So after, you know, 300 attempts, you have got it nailed. So that, that, that slow progression of, of continuous improvement, you know, you can apply that to anything in your life. And that's, to me, that that's been a, the, the biggest benefit, uh, to skateboarding, having my brain wired like that. Yeah. 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 And I know for me, I gravitate towards activities where I can share those activities with others. Yeah. You know, otherwise it's like, well, what's the point if you can't enjoy it with other people? Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's something it's, it's fun to be in a skate park by yourself sometimes because then you have the freedom to like, I can do whatever I want. I'm not getting in anybody's way. I can, you know, try a weird trick or whatever, but then it, it doesn't take too long before, like, you just want somebody else to be around somebody to like share, share the, the experience with, um, yeah. One of my favorite things is to be at a skate park with somebody who's, you know, just trying to learn a trick that I know how to do. It's, it's so satisfying to be like, Hey, you know, if you want to, if you're trying to like, shove it like try putting your foot here and and then they like uh-huh. can do it but then yeah, you're they're come that much closer you <laughs> unlocked something for them and but, then but, they're coming closer and, and it then, just feels amazing yeah and then it, i've had that scenario too where where i i guess at some point i think i learned not to not to be too quick to correct them because mm-hmm. they're in, in their in their in their phase of being less advanced in that trick than I am, let's say, they might do some twist on it that I would have never thought of that I might want to employ in my own version of that trick because you, you're you learning. I don't know if you guys have happened to watch the, I'm pretty sure it's Rodney Mullen did a TED talk. Mm-hmm. Um, just talked about the, the derivative nature of skateboarding as in, you know, I, I could watch any of you guys, we're, we're all gonna do, you know, trick X, today and each of you guys are going to do it slightly different i'm, I'm going to pick up a tidbit of each of your guys's technique and fold it into my own so even though it's it's still trick x it's my version of it and so it's just derivative and this the stuff that the skaters of today are doing is a thousand times beyond what i was able to conceive of back you know when i was skating heavily it's it's just it's just beautiful i'm is there is there any limit to the to the extent that these tricks can go? It's just there's no limit. There's no limits. Yeah. So was this film very successful? It sounds like you you guys yeah. all watched it uh, when it came out. Yeah, it um, won. It won. Um, I think People's Choice and something else for at Sundance, and then won. I had it up. I don't, it, it won several awards. It did quite well, and then a feature film came out long, not long after called um, Lords of Dogtown. Hmm. Um, 
And it's interesting um, from, so just recently, uh, Vans put out another documentary about Tony Alva, Alva um, as part of the Love Letters to Skateboarding series. And um, it, it kind of goes into what life is like, what life has been like for him. Um, it, it covers the same eras that the film does, but also um, goes all the way up to the present day. So he's 62 um, or 60, I think 62 or 63 years old. Um, he's still skating. But when the film came out, uh, he says he said that he really wasn't able to enjoy it because he was partying really hard and um, and things and um, and and I think they all all of those guys made some money off of the film and stuff. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I like I like seeing all the follow up. Uh, what what you know where these guys are? Well, back when the film was completed back yeah. then. Would you say Daniel was two thousand one? Yes. I didn't know it was that old. Wow. Okay. It was funny because watching, you know, one of my, you know, one of my top 10 hero skaters of all time, Jay Adams, you know, one of the guys in this was, um, of course, his stuff was, was awesome. But I remember watching this a uh, couple of days ago now, and I'd forgotten a lot of it because I'd watched it when it first came out, probably in 2002 or three, I'm thinking maybe. Anyway, um, watching this the other day, I'm thinking, it looks like Jay Adams might be in a correctional setting. And sure enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it says that he was. Yeah, the uh, the host of um, that Love Letters series, uh, his name was Jeff Grosso. He passed away just recently, but he was talking about how, because he, he lived a pretty, he was a pro skater and lived a pretty gnarly lifestyle. And, and so one of the things that in this, that I was thinking about, I've been thinking about is in the Tony Alva documentary, um, uh, Tony says, like, if kids are trying to copy me, you better, this was in an interview, I think, in the, like, early 70s, he said, if kids are trying to copy me, you better be ready to suffer the consequences. Mm -hmm. And Jeff was talking about how it wasn't just we were trying to copy his skating, we were trying to copy his, like, lifestyle, like, right, yeah. the partying and stuff. And he said, a lot of us did suffer the fucking consequences. Um, when you grew up and all of your heroes are fuck ups, and the entire culture is centered around youth and rebellion. It was really attractive to try to go out and outdo these guys. And it all starts out as fun and games. Skateboarding is such a progressive thing. And it's the same thing with partying. Nobody wants to stick a video camera in your, in your face anymore because they're afraid you're going to take their fucking video camera. And, uh, and then Josh Brolin talked about how like the bottom line, um, was for for those guys for like tony and jeff and those guys uh it turned into this thing where like everybody up else was growing up around them and they didn't really grow up um so i thought that was kind of an interesting thing where that kind of being cool like we were kind of talking about at the beginning and the like exclude part of an exclusive club and being a tough guy and all of that um that side of skateboarding and and uh, but there's also this, there's a lot of stories like Tony Alva's and Jeff Grosso's where they, they go through that and then they recover and then they become really amazing like philanthropists and just doing amazing um, work for their communities and for recovery and addicts and all kinds of stuff. So, um, and I think it's interesting because I think skateboarding has a lot to do with both sides, the like destructive yeah. behavior, the I've heard somebody talking about how um, they realized that skateboarding was their form of self-harm. Um, and then, but it's also the therapy. It's also the, it's also your, your therapist in some ways. Um, it's, it's the recovery tool as well. I mean, a lot of people get injuries going skateboarding, you know, and <laughs> like, I like you, if you're gonna play, you have to pay basically. You know, everyone knows that like you can't progress without f failing and falling, you know. But yeah, it's also like a huge release, you know. I mean, I go to the skate park specifically because I don't want to be jumping downstairs anymore, <laughs> you know. Like, I just want to like carve and cruise around, like, and to me, that feels good. But, um, yeah, if I do that for more than a couple hours, I'm just like sore, <laughs> you know. And it's worth it, though. 
Yeah, so yeah I, I want to mention, okay. you know, um, Douglas, that I, I am so impressed with folks like you and Ken Long, you know, still doing the theater simply for the sheer joy of doing it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Which I think uh -huh. is. It is nice to find a hobby that you can uh, do, you know, right. keep doing uh, okay. as, you, as you get older. Which is related in some part, I think, to people still liking to skate, you know, even in my mid 50s. Okay. But yeah. um, th there's also a little bit of Peter Pan syndrome going on, though. You, you know, I, I've got I've got a good estimation of my talent, which is to say it's not that good. <laughs> and, and for me, you know, my snowboarding is my skateboarding these yeah. days okay. more so, even though I'll push my longboard around. Um, but but I still think I still have it in mind that even though I ride with some people who are 20 to 30 years younger than me, there's things I can do and some style I can utilize that they cannot do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, there's still part of me that thinks that. Yeah. Yeah. That Probably with Paul too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that performative part, I think is part of, you know, it, it's a kind of just, like you were saying, connecting it to um, Douglas doing theater and kind of stuff. It's, it's nice to do something that's performative around people that feel like they're going to appreciate okay. it. One thing I wanted to um, uh, ask about, you know, because I don't know if you know, but I mean, they had such an extensive song list in that thing, mm -hmm. in that movie, that uh, I just wonder, like, that must have cost a fortune for the licensing fees for that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. So, I mean, I, I, it just makes me wonder, you know, how, if it made money. I saw that the uh, Wikipedia had the budget. It was like $400,000 for the film. Including the licensing? I don't know that for sure. Well, they're, they were skateboarders. They just, they just took they it. They just barged it. They just... <laughs> <laughs> well, in the thank yous at the end, uh, um, you know, they thank some of those groups. Yeah. But, um, so I don't know, maybe some of them donated it. but Yeah, but like Hendrix and all of that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Hendrix, Pink Floyd. I, mm -hmm. I thought Pink Floyd. Yeah. I still think, Douglas, the skateboarding and music, they'll go hand in hand. Yeah. They, oh, sure. No, I, you, you I, really yeah, I, I think it, it, the other. it certainly fit the, you know, fit it. Um, the, you know, a lot of the thrasher kind of heavy metal stuff. And mm -hmm. I was gonna say, I, I uh, not to shift topic all of a sudden, but it occurred to me, we wanted to make sure and mention that that awesome uh, dog bowl days, there's all kinds of articles on that. And I, mm -hmm. I think I'd forgotten that that was right about the time I got started skating. And I remember in the eighties, hanging out at different skate and surf shops, listening to some of the guys that have been there, you know, the dog bowl again in that video was the the kid that was dying of yeah that summer of 77 they said yeah. yeah um i i wasn't there but man that 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 whole that must have what a, what a beautiful moment man to to give that to that boy i don't know how many i keep on hearing it was like a week or two i don't know it was just a few days but mm -hmm. oh, what what a time to be alive yeah mm -hmm. yeah and that's where that's where Tony does the the big front side air that gets right. everybody going, right? Yeah. Ah, what was that all about? That's not yeah. possible. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Yeah. I think that my only, my one claim to fame, Paul, which you'll appreciate, and maybe Forrest and Dan, you'll appreciate this, is uh, getting busted on the same uh, banks where uh, Nadas Kalpas was skating at Venice High School. That's oh, awesome. <laughs> Mike, can I have your autograph? <laughs> um, not, and then just a few years ago getting busted by our own public safety folks for riding my board <laughs> <That's Really? awesome. laughs> on campus <laughs> uh, it was just a polite warning please don't ride here <laughs> i've always but wanted yes, to skate the yes. courtyard i know all those... had the ticket to show us brian and it didn't happen <laughs> <laughs> it, or, or security <laughs> cam footage yeah. Like, that's funny yeah, yeah that's when funny. i taught at u of o as a grad student like i would i would skate through campus you know and sometimes i got caught but like it felt kind of cool like being the teacher on the skateboard you know like <laughs> and i was like really really 
like pushing as hard as I can through crowds and stuff. It was it was like so much fun, you know. You're, you're the you're the guy that gives us a bad name. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, there needs to be at least one of us doing that, right? I've gotten kicked out of a few places. I was going to mention that I've I've always been heavy into sliding. Yeah. And last time I was at like Corvallis, which was not a few years ago, three or four, um, I was doing a bunch of lip slides and stuff, you know, and people were looking at me like, right. or do they, do, do you not slide anymore? I'm always, <laughs> you know, sliding around and stuff like that. Is that not as popular as it used to be? It really depends. I mean, so I would say skateboarding is at its like peak plurality nowadays where like you, you see all kinds of things going on. Right, yeah. um, it, it just sort of depends, you know, um, there's a skateboarder, Ben Rayborn, like he was known for like he and grew up only watching like videos from the 80s, yeah, was, you know, and he was only like yeah. 15, 20 when like he started coming up like 10 years ago. You know, and so he's very influenced okay. by that 80s. And yeah, then, um, yeah, I'll, I'll see like some people sl like do Burt slides and yeah. slides and stuff. Yeah, for sure. Nice. You know. <laughs> well, I was thinking. Yeah, it's, it's yeah, I think skateboarding's at its, I was going to, I was going to say at its best, but that's relative. But it's, yeah, it's at its most open right now. You know, like pretty much you'll see all kinds of styles at the skate park and it's, it's beautiful, you know. Like yeah. I, I, it just makes me, again, being like gay and being out, like I'm accepted and no one questions that. And that's yeah. amazing. You know, where I was being called gay before I was out, you know, like in the early 2000s. And that was like kind of scary, oh, you okay. know. And so I think things have changed a, lo a lot. But I think that's <laughs> not necessarily on skateboarders, but just no, society not. as a whole mm -hmm. and how like uh, since it's a, a masculine activity, it definitely comes down to what is taught to young men and teenagers, you know, more than more so than the skateboard culture, you know, and like skateboarding uh, um, appeals to more masculine people than more feminine people, you know, um, and yeah, I think I think that's a huge thing. Like it's it's slowly growing more and more accepting. Yeah. You know, and yeah, I don't think like any of the homophobia like this comes one, from skateboarders. One. It comes from the from people who happen to be skateboarders. If she that was makes in sense. the meeting. You no, know, and so like our societies progress and which is fantastic. So yeah, it's great. You know, but I will say that like I like the idea of being around in those early days and like everything's possible like because not everything has been discovered whereas you have to do like something crazy nowadays to invent something new but back then like you know um things were happening new things were happening all the time and like that sort of um birth of something is is incredible just like the closest thing i have is the internet like internet was seen like full possibilities now it's like you know controlled by like five corporations or whatever but yeah like i like that beginning of possibilities just being so crazy like i kind of wish i was there it's in some ways you know it seems like a lot of for me anyway a lot of skate videos that come out now or things that excite me uh, not infrequently it's people doing stuff that is a little bit more reminiscent of early skateboarding um, but kind of doing it in the context of modern skateboarding. Um, mm -hmm. um, and it just kind of like surprises you because like, you know, nobody's doing bird slides anymore, but now there's a bird slide and a video and, but I did it in this like bizarre way or way that fits more with what's going on now. And um, I think that's kind of an, uh, a fun thing to see is like some of those, some of these things come back in a fresh way yeah and so that it's not it's not all like super tech ledge tricks necessarily but bringing right. something back yeah exactly yeah there's this uh video that just came out last week his name is tom knox k-n-o-x mm -hmm. and like like scape the way he sees um spots is just incomprehensible to me as someone who's been skating um for 20 years in like this modern era and to see and like that video part like 
gave me goosebumps. It, I like I almost started crying because it was just like incredibly innovative. And that's what I value the most um, in skateboards. Like if they're like doing really cool stuff, sure, that's awesome. Like, but like it to me, it's the people who are finding new ways to apply skateboarding that has never been thought of before. I think that's the most interesting thing going on. And there's a few guys out there doing stuff like that. Um, and that's, I, and like, that goes back to like getting your mind blown back in the seventies, right? Like, whoa, this guy did like is thinking about something completely differently than anyone has ever done. You know, yeah. that's exactly what I look for, yep. you know, and that never changes about skateboarding. Like we want like something extremely new and like what hasn't been done before, you know, it's kind of like, it's a, it's a way skateboarding another thing that skateboarding is in addition to a sport and an art form and all that it's just like a way of seeing the world and like all of a sudden like you know a con or a asphalt schoolyard is a is a wave um and kind of like daniel was saying like when you see a video where somebody sees the world and it gets to sh they can show you how they see the world and it's different than the way you thought of it right. and it blows your mind and then yeah that's and then and then you go out in the world and you see a, a bank or you see, you know, yeah, a, a weird cobblestone, whatever. Um, all of a sudden, it, oh, that's not, that can be skated and, and that could be, you could do something on that. I, I don't know. I think that's, that's one of the things that's like just wonderful about skating is it, it does change the way that you view the world. I watched a video with my wife um, last week. I don't usually make her watch them with me, but um, there's uh, one that came out from Thank You Skateboarding. And it's not like, um, it's just a few minutes long and it's not the most incredible tricks. I mean, they're good tricks, but it's just the um, Tori uh, Pudwell and um, Day, One song. Day One Song skating down a sidewalk and it's filmed really beautifully and the song is great and you just feel like oh i i see the world different i think now like um i see a, a side that's what my wife said she was like skateboarders see the world like they see like beauty in this like crappy broken sidewalk and we could use more of that in this world yeah mm -hmm. so. you, would you send me the link to that yeah. That, that sounds sure. pretty awesome yeah yeah seeing seeing aspects of the environment and seeing potentials that no one else sees and then being able to pull something off that maybe someone sees i never would have thought of it looked at it considered it that way and here this other person is is expressing themselves in that way i never would have even conceived of it let alone thought it's possible and here's this other person showing me that it's not only possible, but they're doing it with style and grace. And maybe, maybe they saw the person, you know, wipe out 86 times before they finally pulled it off. But yeah, that's, what, <laughs> yeah. that's what it's all about. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And there's a professor, I'm sure you'll maybe, I don't know, um, but at U of o, uh, Ocean Howell, um, hmm. he, he oh, does yeah. like urban architecture. He teaches something like that. He was a very well-known respected pro in the 90s and yeah i skated with him at the skate park and like he writes papers about architecture and stuff like that and it's it's, it's just really cool you know um yeah i think it's great yeah yeah you gotta run too and got other, other stuff to do i could uh, talk about this kind of stuff the rest of the day though right exactly yeah. Yeah, man. uh there's the thank you one so Tom Knox, I put that link in there and the thank you skateboarding. That's the one I just put up. Excellent. And then both. Um, now that we've helped people cut uh, Actually, I'm just gonna do the, um, I think the Love Letters to Skateboarding series is another, if, if anybody's interested in kind of like uh, just, continuing to see stuff about skateboarding that's a really great series to check yeah, I need, out i need more stuff to watch i don't have enough stuff to watch there's a there's a million episodes of that and and it's right. pretty special um 
Uh, yeah, the last episode of that series was uh, about pride and um, queer yeah. skaters, and it was like it was just amazing, especially as a queer skater myself. Like, um, this, like that brought me to tears so much. Yeah. And what was really special about that was um, Jeff Grasso passed away, and that was his last episode. It was like the biggest like let's just love each other you know and i think yeah. that was like the best way to go out you know yeah. to have like such a wonderful like we're all skaters come on let's let's just like love each other you know I, it was amazing and it's pretty special coming from him who who was kind of that guy that's just like yeah. school of hard knocks exactly. and um kind of a, a jerk to a lot of people i think and mm -hmm. It, I think it, there's something really magical about seeing that redemption of like the guy who is like the awful person at the skate park. And then he's sitting down with um, trans skateboarders and, and queer skateboarders and realizing like, I was part of this and that sucks, but we can be better and let's do, let's just love each other. Let's go skateboard. And yeah. Why don't we focus on this? thing that we each love yeah. immensely we'll focus on that together rather than what little bit separates us yeah yeah i'm gonna get going too so all right thanks, thanks douglas it. it was very interesting yeah. thanks guys all right take care take care